Hey everyone, my name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and in today's video I wanted to talk a little bit about the process that I use to get the various renders that I create or generate out of my finalized projects. Had a lot of people ask me how I get the results that I do in general with setting up things like my clay render, my wireframe render, and uh, even things like showing UVs for render. So in order to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to load up our scene. I'm going to use my BD1 project as an example just because it's my most recent finished project that I've got. Um, so here we have BD1. You can see that I've got a couple of basic light setups. We have our key and our fill lights all in the same space. And then I have it hidden, but I do have an HDRI in, in the background. So when looking at BD1, I go ahead and change my viewport to Arnold for rendering. You can see we get the render and I forgot to turn on my HDR. So let me turn that back on real quick. Okay, so you can see with our HDRI turned on, we have our regular texture map. The question becomes is how do we want to present our final project for things like ArtStation or Kara or wherever you're posting your final content. So in general, I'll do my standard rotational renders where I'll do a side, a front, a rear, and a left, and another side. Uh, or I'll do a top, depending on what the project is. For BD1, I did both left, right, front, and back. And these are all great, but they don't necessarily show the technical side of things that you're working on. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do the technical showcase. So we'll turn off our renderer. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my HDR light. A lot of the times when I render out my scenes, I like to leave whatever the environment is as its own thing, because generally I don't spend a lot of time on the environments or whatever stand I'm using. I just use what I have available to me to make the final project just look a little bit more polished. So generally, I won't actually touch those in terms of setting them up for uh, whatever technical preview I'm doing. So we're going to select BD1. We can see we've got BD1 selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on a UV showcase. So I'm going to right click, going to assign a new material. We're going to go to Shader, Arnold, and then we're going to just do an AI standard surface. We're going to title this UV display or whatever you want to title it. And then the only thing we're going to change here is our color node. So we'll hit their color node, we'll change it to a file, and then we're going to apply a texture file. Now this texture file is one that I generate off of a URL that's in my description. I've got it linked down below on how to generate those, but we're going to just go to my local drive where I store them in my texture library. And we're going to choose my grid 2K multi. So I'll hit open. And you'll notice nothing changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go render, change our viewport back to Arnold, just because it's an easy way to preview it. And with that, you get your nice UV presentation render. Uh, one thing that I don't necessarily like about this, and it's actually something I forgot to do when I did my final renders, is sometimes I will just up the resolution of the UV map. Uh, I tend to like to see the tiles a little bit clearer instead of these larger portion tiles. So what I'll do is I will go into my Place 2D texture, and then I'll just repeat it. We'll do something like four. Four should give us a nice look. Yeah, so four gives you a nice dense look on the UV setup on the object. Uh, this is also a really good way to figure out your texel density. If you have objects that are showing up too small or too large, uh, you'll be able to kind of view these a little bit cleaner. You can see that I have a couple issues down here with some texel density, like the toes are not the same size. Mm, that's okay for this project. It's not really something I was super concerned about, but if you're troubleshooting your project and trying to figure out are your UVs as efficient as they can be, this is a good way to test that. So that takes care of UV. So what about the clay render? Clay renders are a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back to our viewport. We're going to select the entire thing again. And we're gonna go right click, assign, existing, uh, assign new material, new material. We're gonna go to shaders. We're gonna go to AI standard surface once again. We're gonna title this one clay render. So for clay renders, a lot of times I'll just use a very basic material because I don't really need to get too much out of it. So I'm gonna go to my presets here. I'm gonna set, replace it to clay. And you're gonna notice it turns red. I'll just go in here. I will drag this value across. And then on the subsurface, I'm gonna do the same thing. And then I will actually just bring it down a tad bit because it's gonna be a little bit close to the color that I don't want. So. By bringing it down a little bit, you're gonna get a little bit more of that clay feel to it. So we're gonna go ahead and do render, Arnold. And you can see how that gives us a nice clay render. You get that kind of wet clay look uh, as if you sculpted this out of you know an actual block of clay. So this is how I like to get my clay renders in. Super easy, super efficient. Uh, and the renders look generally pretty nice and they have a little bit of that kind of clay clumpiness look to them. 
without having to stress too much about creating a custom material. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. And then the last one we're going to look at is our wireframe. So we will once again select everything. We're going to assign new material, new material, shader. And this is where you're going to use a different type of shader. Arnold versus older versions of Maya now has a built-in AI wireframe node. So you can use this shader to automatically generate a AI wireframe. So what I'll do generally is I will take this, I'm going to add a little bit of darkness to it just because I don't like the pure white look. And then the line width I will increase just a tad bit. And then the last thing we're going to want to do is change our edge type. The edge type is important because depending on how you built your model is what you're going to be showcasing. So because we built BD1 in quads, we're going to showcase polygons. You can also do patches. Both generally have about the same result. And one of the issues you'll notice with this is that because it's trying to render such finite detail, sometimes your viewport renderer will not actually show the detail unless you have the settings on that cranked all the way up. So this is one of the ones that I recommend just doing your final render on uh, at whatever resolution because it's going to show you the actual results that you're looking for. And you'll be able to really adjust and change the things that you need to change to get the wireframe looking the way you want to. So with that complete, I'll move this over. You can see that as I zoom into my 4K render here, you can see all of the lines perfectly. Everything's nice and crisp. You have a little bit of darkness in the gray just to kind of highlight the other black lines. But otherwise, this is how I generate my wireframe mesh previews. And the same concept follows. I leave the base alone. My whole thing with this is that I want you to focus on the model itself. I want you to focus on the part, the part that was actually worked on and like functioned with. Everything else is just a super easy asset that was either quickly thrown together or pulled in like these mega scans folders. But this is generally how I will go through and actually render out all of my presentation renders for ArtStation, Kara, or any other app that you're posting to. If you guys found this video helpful and you really enjoyed it, please make sure you give me a like, make sure you subscribe because it does help my channel grow. And I'm going to be doing more videos like this that are kind of shorter subjects on the way that I do things and the way that my workflow works, uh, because I know a lot of you have asked for that. So. With that said, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next one.